Aptera and OpenPilot. I saw a lot of questions in response to Aptera's video. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to answer some of the common questions, especially if you're not familiar with semi-autonomous systems or OpenPilot. Let's start with the fundamentals. OpenPilot is an aftermarket self-driving system that can be installed by the owner. It's open source software that pairs with the comma hardware. So the important thing to understand is there's two parts to this. There's the hardware and the software. OpenPilot is the software, comma is the hardware. Here are some of the things it can do according to their website. Automated lane centering, adaptive cruise control, lane change assist, driver monitoring. Uh, it can drive for hours without intervention. And as I mentioned, it's open source and developed on GitHub. Now, if you're not familiar with GitHub, to kind of really dumb it down, it's basically a collaborative space to work on code. Now, someone who uses GitHub often can explain it much better than me, but that's it in a nutshell. This system, as of now, does not fully drive itself. There is no autopilot system on any commercial vehicle that can completely drive itself. There is something like Waymo that can totally drive itself, but that's limited to a little area and you can't buy that car. So what that means, and I'm gonna probably reiterate this quite a few times for those of you that have not experienced uh, semi-autonomous driving, uh, you must pay attention at all times. So you can't go to sleep. You, you have to be focused still on the car driving itself and be ready to take over at any time. Now I have a question for my fellow Aptera reservation holders. How many of you checked off the safety pilot box when you pre-ordered your Aptera? I know I did. Let me know if you did too. All right, here are some of the common questions that I saw on Aptera's video. Will this be available for the launch edition? From what I've gathered, uh, no, it will be an add-on for later and not built in. Do I have to have this? No, you don't. This isn't something that they're throwing into every Aptera. If you have a pre-order on an Aptera, this is what Safety Pilot was. So Aptera, I guess, was coining their own phrase, Safety Pilot. They've now chosen to go with Open Pilot. So that's what you're gonna get for your semi-autonomous driving system. So it's an add-on. You can choose to get it, it's an extra cost, but a bare bones Aptera will not come with Open Pilot. Can I turn it off? Yes, think of it like cruise control. You can turn cruise control on or off. It's up to you when you have it enabled and when you don't. Is it safe? Now this is something that I don't have the answer to. I haven't seen any big news stories about car accidents happening because of Open Pilot. Um, I did a quick search and there was uh, some accidents that could have been, but it wasn't proven that it was OpenPilot's fault. Uh, that's kind of a tricky situation. My personal thing is with autopilot or open pilot, you need to understand that it is not fully autonomous and you need to be aware every second that the car is driving on that. Now that might sound exhausting. We'll get into this in a little bit. It's not as exhausting as it sounds, and I think it's less exhausting than driving yourself. But my opinion is if you get into an accident while autopilot is on, that's on you because you're supposed to be paying attention unless something happened where the car steered itself and you could not take control um, or it was about to run into something and the brake didn't work, then I think that's the car's fault. Otherwise, you need to be aware when a car is in a semi-autonomous mode. How does it work? Now this is another thing that was hard to find a simple answer to. So what I do know is that it uses the CAN or controller area network, which is a communication protocol that cars have. And through that communication, it's able to control things like steering and acceleration and braking. I am assuming that it is tapping into the car's sensors and the car's cameras because the Kama hardware has a, a driver facing camera and a front facing camera. And I believe that's it. And I don't think that's enough to have a, an autonomous driving system uh, that does as much as this does. So I'm, I'm assuming that it is tapping into the car's systems to look around and have sensors. Now, please let me know if I'm wrong, especially if you have a um, comma or open pilot system. 
Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what your experience is and a more detailed user answer. How much does it cost? The current comma three is selling for right around $1,500, uh, but we don't know how much it's gonna cost for the Aptera. My guess is it's probably gonna be about the same. Uh, I guess it depends on what the hardware is and we'll get into that in a little bit. But right now, if you want a comma uh, system for your car, it's gonna cost you $1,500. This one is probably very obvious to my audience, but it's gonna save on Aptera's finances and on their time. Because OpenPilot has existed for a while, they specialize in this autonomous driving. The system's already there. It just needs to be implemented into the car. And OpenPilot seems to be a great fit for Aptera because OpenPilot is open source, meaning anyone who has knowledge of the kind of code that these cars use can contribute to fixing bugs, to putting in new features. Um, it can be a collaborative effort. And that seems right on brand with Aptera. If you're new to autonomous driving, you might be wondering why would I want this? Why would Aptera put their money into it? To sum it up, it's less stressful. While driving through traffic and driving through long stretches of road, like on a road trip, it's less fatigue on your mind. Now, if you've never used it, you might not know how fatiguing it is to drive especially if you've been doing it for a really long time. My experience with autopilot, I was a lot less tired driving through traffic and driving through long stretches of road while the car was on autopilot than if I was driving myself. Even though in the very beginning it was stressful, it took maybe about 10 minutes to get used to a car driving itself. And those 10 minutes were more nerve wracking than driving myself. But after I got used to it, yeah, it, it was way better to have the car do most of the heavy lifting than have me do it. Now, I'm someone that likes driving, but I don't like driving in stop and go traffic. And in very long stretches, like a common trip that us Southern Californians might take is from LA to Las Vegas, that trip can get pretty boring. So having it on autopilot, letting it do most of the work while I'm paying attention is less fatiguing than driving yourself the whole way. The only concern that I really have is, are they gonna keep the hardware in the same kind of form that it currently is in? Uh, I don't really want this huge screen thing underneath my mirror. I don't think it really fits with the aesthetic of Aptera. Um, hopefully they can integrate it somehow, maybe put a little screen in front of you or something on the dash to make it a little more integrated into the car. For myself, if it comes as that big screen thing, I will probably still keep my uh, safety pilot option on, but I'm not gonna really dig the look of it. So other than that, I'm the whole safety thing, I think the technology is at a point where it is safe enough to use as long as, again, as long as you're paying attention and ready to take over at any time. Um, I don't think safety is gonna be much of an issue. I would love to know how many of you have experienced some form of autonomous driving, whether it's Tesla or Nissan or Chevy. How many of you have experienced that? And if you haven't, are you open to the idea of having a system like that? And if you're new to this channel or new to Aptera, check out my playlist so you can see more of my videos on Aptera.